Welcome to this Nova War Arctic Circle um, tutorial mission gameplay video. This time, this is the last of four videos covering the tutorial missions, and we will be doing missions five and six. So let's just get started. So we go to tutorial. So the last two, five and six, radar and sonar. So first, we're going to do radar. In this tutorial you will learn more about how your radars work and how you can most effectively detect enemy units. Use radar efficiently is the objective. Okay, so once again it's just a repetition of the um, initial screen giving this information. Right, so select your Halifax class frigate and launch its helicopter to stay close to the ship. Do not change elevation or turn on radar yet. An aircraft is automatically launched from your land base, you will need it later. So, that's the first thing we've got to do. So let's zoom in on the ship. Deck. And launch the helicopter. As you can see, the objective has been uh, crossed out, so we've completed it. Right, here we go. You detected a fishing boat nearby. Note that neither the helicopter nor the frigate uses active radar. The fishing boat was detected passively by the ESM capabilities of your radar. Excuse me. This detects various electronic transmissions from the target without you having to turn on any sensors. Notice that you do not get an exact position for the target, but you have identified it. Combat units are typically shielded from creating significant emissions. Your helicopter could see this signal because it is at a higher elevation than your ship, giving it longer vision. Having your helicopter selected, go to the Movement Planner and change elevation to medium height. OK, so let's click on the helicopter. And Movement Planner, here, this is the top one. You can see it's height number 3. You can see that it's climbing up. Let's just have a look at the mission logs. Okay. Right, here we go with the next one. The increased elevation has allowed your helicopter to detect a second fishing boat. Still using passive radar only. I don't have it switched on. Elevation is very important for detection. Now is the time to turn on active radar on your helicopter. Go to the sensors panel, select the APS-124 radar listed first and click the activate radar button. OK. And APS-124 is the very first one, and it uh, detects surface and air, so just press the button to activate it. Notice that active radar runs a high risk of counter-detection by the enemy, and is less likely to identify the target but has much longer range and accuracy. Passive radar is safe from counter-detection, but has less chance of detecting military units that is not itself using active radar. It's more likely to identify targets, but less likely to get an exact fix. Now with active radar at high altitude, send your helicopter towards the map marker near the fishing vessels. Note you will definitely want to increase the time compression to 120 or even higher. This is a large area. Well, it tends to always be a large area. But uh, this is where we've got to send the helicopter. Switched on, let's get rid of that. So, 
so let's uh, increase the game speed to 120. Very well. Use your helicopter and reconnaissance plane to survey the region and identify the ships that traffic this busy area. Use high elevation and passive and active radar to experiment. Be on the lookout for a civilian airliner that is expected to be in the area soon. High time compression is recommended in this tutorial. When you detect and identify the airliner, the tutorial is finished. Do a patrolling move. Right. Let's have this go as high as possible. It's already got some waypoints set out for it. different uh, search pattern there. And let's just activate the radar. Infrared is already set on. actually see that covers quite a large area. Unfortunately as soon as you switch off these buttons as I've mentioned before um, that uh, indicator of uh, the range just totally disappears. surface contact. As you can see, because we don't know what it is, it's sort of a, a ghost ship. again. Change our patrol area 
right there. Sorry, you should use the right mouse button instead of the left. This is the um, strange thing, I suppose, because like most simulators, uh, there's a time to think about what you're doing rather than a click fest, um, and yet the developers decided on this game to, should be a halfway house between an RTS type game and a, a sim type game. Yet uh, I can't imagine many RTS fans be too pleased about uh, this. So it's uh, a bit of a st strange one in some respects. They obviously were trying to target as big an audience as possible, which can have its good points and bad points. I mean, one of the things that um, it can't do is some of the more subtle things of Fleet Command. I know, know I've mentioned this bef before, and uh, I promised that I wouldn't speak too much about Fleet Command. But in Fleet Command, if you had uh, an aircraft go down, there was a good chance the pilot was still alive, and so you'd send out a rescue mission um, to retrieve the pilot. But in this game, it's a matter of, well, if the aircraft gets destroyed, there's no chance. But uh, that having to um, sort out a rescue operation for a pilot, a downed pilot, adds to the immersion I think, anyway. But they decided not to go that deep. Oh, there's some other vessel, possibly a another fishing boat. Should be able to switch this on now. Still no sign of that uh, aircraft. Oh, here we go. And there we go, over, with the city end screen. As you can see, time-wise, we've only done 13 minutes 41 seconds, although game time it's been nearly an hour. OK, so let's just exit to the menu. And now we will do the final tutorial mission, Sonar. In this tutorial you learn about how your sonar works 
and how you can most effectively detect enemy units from your submarines. You will notice that your submarine sonars have detected a nearby boat. If you open your sensors panel, you will see that your Yassen class submarine has an impressive number of sonars. You will notice that one sonar, the SCAT-3, is not operating. It must be manually deployed. Select the Deploy option for this sonar and use time compression to wait until this towed array sonar is deployed and operative. Okay. Here's the SCAT-3. Press the deploy. It says deployed, but it um, shouldn't really be deployed that instantaneously. Four different um, types of uh, detection detectors. Mayed Viet Itza. I know I didn't pronounce that uh, correctly. It's a radar, the towed array which we've just um, deployed. Um, the mouse raw flank, the Alpha mouse raw flank sonar. Sounds a bit like that uh, 1960s movie, The Mouse of the Road, or was that 1950s? Anyway, and also the MGK 500 Sharp Gill Sonar. Next, going to tell us to do. Speed it up. Oh, as soon as I do that, it pops up. Turn your submarine to the east or west. Sonars that are deployed away from the unit's hull are far more powerful than half hull mounted sonars. Note, however, that all sonars on a ship or submarine have blind or baffle zones where they cannot detect anything. A towed sonar array is deployed behind the unit and cannot detect anything in front of it around a 90 degree angle. Hull mounted bow, bow, excuse me, bow sonars cannot detect units behind the vessel, and flank array sonars can only detect units on either side, not in front or behind. Now turn your submarine either to the east or to the west without changing the speed or depth by setting a waypoint. Well, let's go towards the fishing vessels. Note that towed array sonars do not operate at all when the unit speed is higher than slow. Um, well, actually, I seem to recall on um, submarine simulators, they, they tend to break if you go too fast. All sonars are far less effective at higher speeds. At cruise or above, your submarines will be practically blind. Also note that in a combat situation, a submarine will never use active sonar unless it is already detected. 
Units at speed are much more noisy and easier to detect by sonar than units moving slowly. Feel free to experiment with the speed and direction of your sub, taking care not to lose track of your targets. To complete this tutorial, use missiles or torpedoes to sink one of the targets. Now, when I've played um, submarine simulators, never te even if I was detected, you didn't tend to turn on any active sonars. Because uh, usually um, it's a hostile detecting you and you want to try and disappear again. But, um, let's uh, keep with what, uh, in the spirit of this game, which is not a simulator. There's not really that much more to this than what we can see. Let's flip these over. Um, don't tend to have much of a choice on which weapon to fire at which enemy asset. So, um, anyway, let's declare this as a foe and shoot at it. picked up on uh, this target. be over any moment now hopefully Torpedoes decided just to uh, stop. Oh. Let me take out the ship. Okay, so as you can see, this lasted. Um, 8 minutes 41 seconds, but the game, actual game time was 32 minutes. And that's it really, that's all the tutorial missions. Um, <coughs> excuse me. As I mentioned before, the um, NATO campaign, the first three missions I believe it is, are effectively the tutorial, the first three tutorial missions. Uh, all of these campaign missions are available to play on an individual basis as soon as you uh, get the game. You don't have to unlock them by playing the campaign. They're just here waiting for you. Right, well that's it. 
Thank you very much for watching.